Wealth Simple has been rolling out a lot of new features in Wealth Simple Trade. One of the new features for 2023 is stock lending. In this video, I will tell you all there is to know about Wealth Simple Trade stock lending, including its pros and cons. Most importantly, I will let you know if you can make any money out of it. I am Dipesh and welcome to Wealth Time. Here are the topics that I will be covering in this video. You can use the chapters in YouTube if you want to skip ahead to a particular topic. I want to start this video talking about my personal experience of using this new feature in Wealth Simple. I turned on this feature about 2 months back hoping that I could make some extra money with the stocks that I already hold. And in this 2 months time, I made a grand total of $0. Disappointing, right? It definitely was for me. However, once I started to learn about how stock lending works and what it exactly means, it made complete sense to me on why I was not making any money. And if you are an investor like me, it might not work out for you either. I also want to talk about the risk associated with stock lending, especially since it is not covered by Canadian Investor Protection Fund. Without making this video any more complex, I want to start by talking on what stock lending is and how it works. Understanding the fundamentals will help you decide on whether you should even turn on this new feature in your Wealthsimple account. Ok, so what is stock lending in Wealthsimple? When you turn on this feature, you are giving Wealthsimple permission to lend your stocks to third party. The third party, because they are borrowing your stock, will give some interest to Wealthsimple. Wealthsimple in turn gives 50% of the profit they earn from this interest back to you. I have to admit that Wealthsimple is quite transparent about the process and has documented it well in their FAQ document. And you might be wondering, instead of buying stocks from the market outright, why would anyone buy your stock instead? Here are top 3 reasons on why investors do it. I'll start with the most common one. Number 1. To sort the stock. How this works is, let's say an investor thinks that the price of a particular stock is going to go down and let's assume that you have that particular stock. Then what they will do is, they will borrow the stock from you, sell it at the exact price that they bought it for and wait for the price to go down. And when the price eventually goes down, they will again buy the same stock for a lower price. And that's how they make the profit in the difference. And sorting a stock is more common than you think it is. Professionals do it on a daily basis and they make profit regardless on whether the price of a stock is going up or it's going down. Pretty cool, right? Number 2. To exert influence or decision power. Companies can borrow stock in order to participate in corporate action such as voting right, hoping that they will have influence in the managerial decisions. In the long run, companies want to make sure that the stocks that they are buying goes high in value. So with this, they are hoping to do just that. And the third reason is to cover deficits or failed deliveries. Companies are required to hold a certain number of stocks. However, if they don't have the number of stocks required in order to fulfill their contractual obligations, companies borrow stocks. Now, before you start lending your stocks away, there are some risks associated with stock lending that you should know. Again, here are top 3 risks associated with stock lending. So let's get to it. Number 1. Chance of devaluing your stock Remember how I had previously said that some traders borrow your stock in order to sort the stock? Basically, they are putting a downward pressure on the stock market which could eventually lower the price of the stock that you hold. Would I worry about it though? To be honest, not really. I could not care less. As a very small investor, I don't think that the number of stocks that we hold have any impact in the larger stock market. And also, if you are not lending out your stock, someone else will. So this really is not a risk that I am really worried about. On to number 2. You lose the right to vote. I am not sure if you are aware about this, but even if you hold a single stock of a particular company, you have got a right to vote for the changes in the company. To be honest, I was not aware about this until one day Questrade sent me a mail to my mailing address detailing on how I can vote for all of my holdings. If you lend your stock, you lose that right to vote. On the other hand, the borrower will have that right. Again, I am not too much worried about this. 
unless you hold a lot of stock in a particular company, our vote will likely change nothing. You might feel differently, but really, if you have never voted before, you should not be paying too much attention to this. Number 3. You could lose all your money and you are not even insured. Before I scare you off, chances of this happening is really small, but nonetheless, there is a possibility that you could lose everything. When you invest in Wealth Simple, you are covered for up to $1 million by Canadian Investor Protection Fund. So even if Wealth Simple went bust, you'd still be covered and you'll get all your money back. However, when you are lending your stock, the lended stock is not covered by the fund. Thankfully for you and me, the borrower is required to put at least 100% of the value of the stock as collateral. So even if the borrower goes bust, you'll get your initial investment back. The only problem with this is, if the borrower goes bust, you could lose all your potential profit. Let me give you an example. Let's say you lend out a stock worth $1000 and the price of the stock rises to $1400. The borrower sorts the stock hoping the price will go down. But it does not and the borrower loses all the money. If the borrower goes bankrupt, you'll get your initial $1000 back because it was part of collateral. But you miss out on the $400 profit. That's one risk if you lend your stock. If you want to learn about the risk associated with stock lending in greater detail, please use the link in the description down below. It's a risk disclosure document published by Wealthsimple. Now, let's talk about why stock lending did not work for me, specifically in my Wealthsimple TFSA account. In my TFSA account, I hold companies that are very safe, companies that are over 50 years old, and I also hold a lot of ETFs. And Looking at this image published by Wealthsimple, you can clearly see that a person who has got a portfolio full of ETFs, safe, old, reliable companies, earns significantly less money than a person whose portfolio is comprised of meme stocks. Unfortunately, because of this reason, even though I had the feature turned on for two months, I did not make a single penny. When everyone was trying to sort the TD Bank stock, I was hoping that I would make some money, but even that did not happen. Well, having said that, should you go ahead and turn on the stock lending feature in your Wealth Simple account? If you think that you have got stock that will be lent out, you should definitely give this feature a try. The best part about this feature is that you can opt in and opt out anytime you want. I also like the fact that you can select which stocks you want to lend out and which stocks you want to opt out from. This feature is something that I would definitely give it a try at least one time. Just remember that the more volatile a stock is, higher are the chances of you making more money. Having said that, please don't go out buying volatile stocks hoping to lend them out. Have you tried stock lending before? How was your experience? Let us know in the comment section down below. Hope this video was helpful. Thank you for watching.